The adit is probably a few hundred feet this way. What we need to do is we need to stay at about this elevation, maybe a little bit higher. Just follow this elevation into the woods in that direction and look for evidence of an adit into the hillside heading east. Okay, so we're outside of the mine right now. Unfortunately, on the surface, most everything has been scrapped, destroyed, bulldozed, whatnot. Um, there used to be an aerial tramway which went up the hill that way, and there was also a railroad went up the hill, and that's where they transported the ore onto a main railroad. One of the things that is still remaining here, interestingly, is an intact ore car wheel. You can see the flange of the wheel, and this thing would have been barreling down the tunnel at the bottom of an, of an ore car attached to an axle through here. There would have been four of them. Unfortunately, only one remains, but this is, uh, this is really cool. All right, so the boat is docked and I'm about to hop on the ferry. Here we go. We're in the main tunnel right now and it's quite large in proportion. It's, it's basically a railroad tunnel size. Um, they, in driving this tunnel, they mined all of the iron to the left, to the right, up, down, uh, just leaving a floor. All right, so we're heading down the main tunnel right now. This tunnel was driven to connect two separate mines, believe it or not. Uh, the earlier one is presumed to have opened as early as 1843, but it's not certain. Um, but they both were in heavy operation from 1880 onward, right until about 1899. And you can really see how the, uh, they're really following the, the top of the vein all the way up, all the way up there. And you can see there's a, uh, there's a hole in the wall up there where the stope continues. Wow, can you imagine excavating this by hand? Yeah, this is just like a well-driven well crosscut. I mean, to excavate this in a, in a short period of about 20 years is, is just nothing short of amazing. And all in the 1800s. In 1912, they intended to start working this again, and they erected new buildings. They even started a uh, wet concentrating plant. But as far as we know, no actual mining ever took place. So our friends are just up, up ahead here. Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks. We just followed the tunnel about mm, maybe a thousand feet. And because tunnels always run uphill, the tracks are now no longer flooded. And we're gonna explore the rest of the mine, which is hopefully gonna be a little bit drier. But they mined iron here. Not only did they mine iron, they mined what was thought as one of the largest deposits of its time. Um, a man by the name of Thaler estimated that there was 50 million tons of magnetite ore, mineable ore. The problem was, while there might have been that amount, there's still a proportion of that that's either too deep or too rich with sulfur and that is just not mineable, especially with the technology of the day. Had this mine operated much later in the, let's say, even the 1940s, this would have been a massive undertaking. They probably would have been able to process a lot more ore. It's not often that you can walk from mine to mine underground, but here, that is such the case. We basically walked down the tunnel far enough that we actually entered a different mine. Originally, this part of the excavation was operated by a different company, different landowner, different name. And later on, the two mines, probably through great cooperation, uh, they extended the tunnel from the first mine 
to this second mine and formed a new company. So we're now in a different mine, technically speaking. Um, and so it probably had different people mining here. It probably even had different mining techniques, um, especially early on before the consolidation. So it'll be interesting to check this out and see what we find. There's a lot of rock that was obviously filled here. They would have filled it from above, but you can still travel pretty, pretty high up here. And wow, it looks like there's another level up here. Yeah, so this here, this looks like a, uh, an actual working level. They would have trammed the, the ore to this point here and they would have dropped it down this chute into the main tunnel and then they would have shipped the ore down the main tunnel. There's definitely a very sulfurous smell in this mine. You have this gigantic ore body, but you go too far in and you hit the sulfur and it's not workable. If you were here in the 1880s, there'd be no mistake that you weren't alone. You would hear nothing but hammering, men double jacking, striking drill bits of steel, thunderous echoes from mine cars rolling down the heavy gauge track. It would be a sight to behold, but today, all is quiet. This is a massive stope. Wow. The ceiling, it looks like it's about 80 feet high. I mean, they pulled a lot out of here. You can see where they would have had a drift, a higher drift up here. This would have been a, a working level. They might have had multiple tunnels just in this stope alone. But they eventually, excavated away all the tunnels and left a large open space. This right here, I think proves that this was once a tunnel. You can see the, the ribs, the sides of the tunnel that was driven through here. And they eventually opened up all of this to the left and the right, but this is the last remaining bit of tunnel in this stove. This room, this is why they were here. How many millions of dollars do you think they made? In 1880s money? Let's just say a lot. <laughs> I don't think they walked away broke, but they did walk away disappointed because the technology hadn't caught up with the potential that this mine has. This is probably one of the largest, if not the largest stope in the Hudson Valley. Just imagine what this would have been like when this mine was in operation. They would have never known in just short of 20 years time, all of this would be abandoned forever. They estimated 50 million tons of ore here and in 19 years, they just walked away. Just think of how much is still remaining. I think even the miners didn't truly know how large this excavation was because they didn't have the lighting to. They knew it was huge. You wouldn't have even seen a ceiling in those days. It would have been too high up. When this mine was in operation, all of the oil lamps flickering in the darkness would have looked like fireflies in the night. When the last miner left this mine, he probably thought 
of returning maybe in five years, two years maybe, a year, but it was never to happen. Over a hundred years later, there's no sign of this mind ever coming back.